Welcome to oxidation and reduction. Here's a little demo. Uh, solution of zinc nitrate, a solution of copper 2 nitrate. Piece of copper, piece of zinc. Take the copper, put it into the zinc nitrate, you look at it, nothing happens. You put it into the copper 2 nitrate. That's a pretty clean piece of copper. Take a piece of zinc, put it into the zinc nitrate solution, there's no reaction. Put it into the copper 2 nitrate. Oh, that doesn't take very long at all, does it? You look at that, and there's a reaction where the zinc metal is breaking down into zinc ions, and copper ions are forming copper metal on here. They're pretty dark now, but that's solid copper forming. So many of the reactions that take place on this planet involve the exchange of electrons from one substance to another. Even the majority of the reactions that we had in the last unit, certainly all the combustion reactions uh, that we did in the energetics unit, were all exchanges of electrons. So even though uh, explosions might happen and a vigorous reaction occurs, that's usually the result of exchanges of electrons between elements. Now, exchanges of electrons, this gives us the re redox unit that we're doing right now or electrochemistry, because that exchange of electrons causes a current to be able to be formed, because electrons are electricity. So this is what we're studying here. And the redox term means reduction, oxidation. So the copper-zinc demonstration that you just saw, I'll explain right now in terms of the equations behind it and what was happening uh, uh, underneath the surface, so to speak. Okay, so. What we saw was that the zinc metal was turning into zinc ions and breaking down while the copper in solution, the Cu2 positive ions in solution, were actually forming solid copper. There were two things that were going on there. The zinc is breaking down into zinc ions and giving up two electrons. So you see how that's balanced, two positives and two negatives, zero total on this side, zero here. And that's called a half reaction. Two half reactions together make up a whole reaction. So the other part of that was that the copper ions were gaining those two electrons right there to form solid copper. So these two reactions together make a net equation. Okay, now there are some terms and definitions that are absolutely vital. You've got to understand them. You have to memorize them. You really do because a lot of the uh, tests that teachers do is just test me on the terminology here. So, when a substance goes from being a metal or a certain chemical and breaks down to form electrons, that's called oxidation. Oxidation means losing electrons. And losing electrons means that the substance has the electrons written on the right hand side of the equation. Zinc is being oxidized. It's losing two electrons. Now, the copper ions here are gaining two electrons. So the copper ion is undergoing reduction. Reduction means gaining electrons. Now I know that sounds kooky because you're saying, Reducing means gaining. That doesn't make sense. But then again, chemistry doesn't make sense, so that makes perfectly good sense. But, what it really means is this. See that charge of 2 positive there? It's turning into a charge of 0 for copper. 2 positive is going down. It's being reduced to 0. And therefore, gaining electrons reduces a charge. So, that's why it's called reduction. Okay, so we've got oxidation, reduction, and we can't add two equations together that both are reduction or both oxidation. This unit isn't red red and it's not ox ox, it's redox, reduction and oxidation. So one's always losing, the other one's always gaining. That makes sense. Now, if this loses two electrons and this gains two electrons, the ratio of reaction between them is like one to one here. And so we take this reaction and this reaction, add them together. When you add them together, you do realize, of course, that the electrons cancel out. So you get this and this reacts to form this and this, and that is the net ionic equation for this reaction. You know, you can get a list of substances and, and are asked to then determine out of that list of substances what the oxidizing and reducing agent is, and you need a chart to be able to do that. And so, 
your teacher's going to give you an oxidation reduction chart, and they're generally written this way, with the things that like to gain electrons the most at the top left-hand corner, and they're all written as reduction reactions with the electrons on the left-hand side, and then the things that like to lose electrons the most are found on the right-hand side, closer to the bottom, actually. So, on these charts, you have to be able to determine who the strongest oxidizing agent and reducing agents are. I'll tell you what that means. If this substance is undergoing oxidation, that means that it was influenced to lose electrons by the copper ions, who were the agent of oxidation. So now get this, anything that's undergoing reduction itself, it is a strong oxidizing agent or an oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent undergoes reduction. Reduction means you are gaining electrons. Gaining electrons means they're written on the left hand side. You gotta make, make sure that that gets memorized. So, this must be the thing that influences this to undergo oxidation, right? Or, sorry, reduction. Yeah, that's right. This is undergoing reduction. This tells this to undergo reduction because it really gives electrons to it. And so that means that this chemical right here is the strong reducing agent. Reducing agents undergo oxidation themselves. And that means that you write the electrons on the right hand side. So, oxidizing agents undergo reduction. Reduction means gaining electrons. And then, for these guys here, a reducing agent means you're undergoing oxidation, which means you are losing electrons and you write them on the right. Okay, now let's do a question that you might see in class.